And the next speaker will uh, be talking about managing your reputation and how online reputation and how the ownership of that works on the internet. Uh, I'm happy to welcome Jose Ignacio Fernandez from Trati. He is the founder and chief technology officer from Trati, which is an award winning and also, I think, uh, well funded uh, startup. With, nah, that's some trust. And I think trust is what you're going to talk about. Thank you. So I have lots of transitions, so I will make this gesture. It will be my first collaborative presentation. <laughs> OK, so um, I'm Jose from Trady. Um, uh, for those of you who don't know me, you might be wondering um, if who are you and why should I trust you? And I think that's a fair question. Um, because I could be this guy. And, you know, there are some weird people out there, and this could be a kind of dangerous world, and you'd never know who's on the other side. So, um, I think I understand your concern. Um, and if we are, I'm, I mean, this question has two parts. Who are you and why to trust? So, for the first one, who are you? Um, that brings me to the concept of identity, because identity is who you are. And to answer the question of who you are, I always think of some basic statements about me, about uh, like the personal data, like your nationality. In my case, I'm Spanish, and have, if I have to prove my nationality, um, I use typically my Spanish ID. So this thing works because of a couple of things, because, because of, of a couple of reasons. First, um, um, there is, it's, um, it has been issued by the Spanish government, and that's something that is very difficult to fake. I cannot create a car like this very easily. And the second one is that there's some picture that shows that I am the owner of that ID. So another person cannot use that ID because it has a different picture. And if you want to be completely sure, you can just go to the, to the police and check my fingerprints and I can, you can make sure that that ID belongs to me. So it provides some value because it says something useful about me, uh, my nationality and some basic personal data. and um, it, um, it's, um, the involved actors are very difficult to impersonate. And we like using these kinds of IDs, uh, like taking them in a wallet, uh, because we are in control of what we have. We can throw them away, we can decide what we are using and what we are sharing with someone, and we are in, in control of our data. So that's something that we like. So we were thinking about how to bring this experience, this off offline experience online. And to emulate cards, um, we have some tools that we can use in the online world. First, asymmetric cri cryptography um, can help for this. So asymmetric cryptography is just um, using like public and private key pairs. So this is a public key is a kind of ID, and a private key is a kind of password. So I'm identified by this public key, and I can use the private key to do things like uh, some user authentication to prove that I, I'm, that I am that particular ID, or, and also to sign uh, certain messages. So I can write a message and I can sign it so that everyone knows that I was the one who wrote that message. So with this in hand, I can, we could um, define, we could uh, emulate the, the card system online to do something like this. So this is a kind of reputation card. And this means that I have five stars. Why? Because it has a, has a holder identified by that ID, 3B4RN, and I can authenticate and prove that I am the, the owner of that public key. And it has been signed by someone else, identified by A1, C, D2, whatever, and that ID, uh, okay, let's assume that that is Traity. So in, in Traity, we measure reputation of people, given that some data that they provide us voluntarily, we analyze that and we conclude that, for example, I have five stars reputation. Okay, so Trady issued that digital card and I can use it anywhere. And uh, if, I, if, I, if I want to use them or just destroy it or keep it or whatever. Next example could be a trust card. So that has not been issued by Trady, it has been issued by someone else, also identified by some public key like VC, R, 3, 4, 8, whatever. And in this case, I'm again the holder. I can prove that I am the holder thanks to my, my private key. And this person, let's call her Alice, uh, gave me that card and I can use it anywhere else. So 
the, the way this would work in the online world would be like I authenticate as this public key and then I can share my reputation card or my trust card. But now we have a problem because I was, uh, I was able to prove my identity but my, ident my, my reputation depends on two people. So you might be wondering who's A1 CD2 and whatever and who's BCR348 something else. And what you are doing is that you are questioning my reputation because reputation is what others think of you. And this is why I should trust you. Because I, I mean, we had a problem where my identity depends on other people's identity that might depend on other people's identity. So that's the problem that we have. So there are many ways that we can tackle that. Basically, two basic approaches. One is what we could call the uh, axiomatic trust. So in the case of axiomatic trust, we could say that we can add some axioms to the system. We could say that A1 CD2 is straighty just because you know that that is straighty and you can add that public key to a whitelist. So you could say that that's straighty and I trust all the five star reputation cards that come from that public ID. So then you could say that everyone with that reputation could be trusted. And also you could say that this person I told you is Alice is just this BCR348 whatever public ID. So this is the problem that we have when using public keys uh, that it's not something that we can really understand and we also don't know what's the real meaning behind. So we need, need to trust a couple of them by default. So this is what we could go with this approach. There are certain limitations because there, because there are only a couple of, of public, I, public keys that we could know and that we could trust. I mean, we could add these trade verifiers, some other verifiers that could be there, but not all of the individuals that could be in the world. So there's another approach, which is uh, what we could call decentralized trust. In the case of decentralized trust, there are some other things that we can do. In this case, we are not trusting anyone by default. And in this case, what we are doing is analyzing the trust network, the interactions, and the age. So this is what we do on Treaty. Uh, we let people trust each other. We analyze the network. We analyze interactions. We check if those individuals seem like legit, seem like something that was not created just to fake a network and to fake uh, some trust and also analyze the, the, the age of the account if it was created yesterday and has no interactions, probably that's a spam user. So uh, I put the example of uh, asymmetric cryptography uh, coming to help us for this, but there are many other challenges that are involved in being able to use uh, reputation and identity in a decentralized way and in a way that we are in control of the data. So one is data ownership, so who's, who's owning the data? So we know that in many cases, most of our data is owned by either Google or Facebook. That's not something that we are happy with because they have the right to decide um, uh, instead of us. So there are other approaches, like having that in our, in our devices, having that in some other places, like uh, using systems like MadeSafe, OpenMasterSeed, StoreJ. Um, these are decentralized approaches to storage, and we could use them and keep using this system I, I, I already mentioned where we are just sharing certain types, certain uh, portions of data that are secure because they are signed by someone else and you can keep them and you don't have to, um, you, you don't need to have them in a storage that is controlled by someone else. But there's again another concern about privacy because I was sharing my data with someone else. For example, when I came to France, I, there's a very simple reputation system which is if, if, you are, um, if you are coming from certain countries, you don't, you don't have any problem to get in. I show my Spanish ID and then as I'm a member of the European Union, I don't have any problem to get in. But even in that case, I'm sharing my nationality with another, with, with another person. So there's a privacy issue. And in this case, this, this privacy issue means that um, you are sharing your data with everyone who wants to verify or wants to know about your reputation. So there are only two possibilities here, which is when you are using no verifier, you need to share the data all the time. And if you are using some verifier like Traity, you need to trust the verifier. The upside is that you are only sharing the data once. And you could be a kind of anonymous identity in the sense that there's a middleman, so, um, um, you share all that, and then you have this trust card that says you have five star reputation that you can use um, in other situations without releasing all your, all your information. Also, I mentioned the case that you could have a completely fake network, like I create some individuals that say that they trust me, and uh, things like this. 
And in this case, this is where blockchain can help us um, in the sense that it's very difficult to fake all these interactions if all the interactions are into blockchain. So that's why we are using blockchain in, in, on Traity in order to, to make it very difficult to, to, fake, to fake the past because it's not possible to, to create certain interactions that have happened during a couple of years on blockchain so that people cannot really uh, create a network just to, to appear that some people trust you. So that's the that's part that um, uh, blockchain can help a lot in order to provide some transparency to, to this. So going back to the first question, which was why yeah, are you trusting me? So um, on, the first, um, on the first step, um, we share first is really hard to fake. So uh, here is Lisa Gansky, here uh, is Antonal Leonard. There are many things, many, many people around and uh, there's a huge venue and a lot of people coming here. So you are really trusting the Wisher, the Wisher identity. This really looks like the Wisher Fest. And also, uh, only Wisher can let someone speak at Wisher Fest. So at, in some way, you are trusting my reputation as some people let me speak here. <laughs> so in this case, what you are doing is applying some kind of axiomatic trust. And that's why uh, you're kind of trusting, <laughs> trusting me for an attending this, this, this talk. So anyway, thanks for that. Uh, thanks for listening.